A recent Economic Times article stated that 90% of HR managers think their performance review results are not accurate. 70% uh, companies say there is a need to improve the link between performance management and talent decisions. In the new normal of remote or hybrid workplaces, performance management needs to be looked under a whole new lens. Uh, we at Amiboids conducted a global uh, CHRO study around the future of work, and we have some interesting findings which we will uh, discuss here today with our eminent panelists who are there with us. Uh, so quickly introducing our panelists for today. Uh, I have with me Ram Krishna Rao. Uh, he's the head of uh, learning and OD uh, at Page, uh, which is essentially brands of uh, Jockey and Speedo. Uh, welcome, Ram. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, our next panelist is uh, Ritu Parna Dasgupta. Uh, so she's the talent and development leader at Intuit. Uh, welcome, Ritu. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, and our third panelist is Arvind uh, Warrior. Uh, he's the HR director with Rapid Value. Uh, welcome, Arvind. Sure. Thank you. Thanks being part of this great show. Yeah. And our fourth panelist for today is Anand Inamdar. Uh, he's the CEO of Amibirds. Uh, welcome, Anand. Thank you, Karthik. Really looking forward to, you know, hear what everyone has to say on this topic. Yeah, same here. I, I, I think this is uh, one topic which I'm sure is very close to a lot of uh, HR leaders' hearts and also something which employees are always, uh, you know, eager to know about. Uh, so going back to our global CHRO study that we did, according to that study, over 44 companies uh, said that their performance uh, management methods are completely uh, changed post the pandemic to meet the requirements of this new normal that we're calling, which is the remote or hybrid work. Uh, so, so Ram, uh, my question to you is how can performance management be reinvented uh, to cater to this new normal? Performance management as a, as a function itself, you know, I, I see that uh, evolving uh, rapidly. Now, there, there was a time when uh, performance management and increments would go hand in hand. We'll review performance once a year and you know, annual uh, cycle of sorts and uh, performance management and pay were you know, very closely linked and you know, went hand in hand. Mm -hmm. To scenarios now, uh, we moved from an annual, then we started a you know, mid-year uh, kind of a review and you would do some corrections uh, and then move forward. Mm. We move to a phase where you know we uh, some organizations said you know we don't want to do bell curve. We'll do you know continuous performance management. Uh, bell curve is very limiting in nature and uh, so on and so forth. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's on the organization front. And also we moved away from you know uh, individualistic uh, KRAs to you know, project specific uh, OKRs saying, you know, we, uh, uh, K KRAs were sort of creating silos by design. Mm. Everyone is focused on now uh, what I need to do to achieve my increment, my goal. Uh, whereas the larger perspective was getting lost. Correct. You, you want to define uh, responsibility, uh, you know, so that the accountability is fixed and then you do KRAs. At the same time, you are limiting collaboration by design. So we move to you know, OKR as a model, mm. uh, where the goals are more, more not individual specific, but you know, project specific and your contribution to that overall goal. Mm. So that's the evolution uh, it has gone. And you know the market sort of got disrupted uh, to an extent where you know there's a lot of uh, resignations, offers, counter offers, and the whole and the whole performance uh, linkage between performance and pay sort of got disrupted completely. Mm. And to a point where it makes sense to disengage, uh, you know, um, performance discussions and pay discussions. Pay discussions there could be multiple factors. You know, you do a market uh, depending on you know different domains, different skill sets, uh, how the market is moving. Based on that, you may do pay corrections uh, separately. Whereas performance discussion is a very different uh, ball game together. Mm -hmm. 
how how i would see this is my uh, personal view um i look at uh, essentially the objective of performance management is engagement mm -hmm. you want the you want the employee to be engaged uh, emotionally connected to the organization uh, to the task at hand to the project and willingly contribute enthusiastically contribute and participate mm -hmm. that's essentially what uh, our objective is that the employee uh, should feel engaged belonged more than uh, management as a word would you know connote more of control and you know monitor etc whereas the intent is very different mm -hmm. right so i see um, if i look at it what contributes to an employee engagement i would say uh, there is an aspiration element there is an ability element and there is an opportunity element Hmm. if you ask an employee to say that you know uh, why are you not engaged uh, you know what there is a scope for improving engagement the employee is likely to respond you know i can do more but i i probably don't have the opportunity to do so hmm. right or um, i am given a task where i feel uh, you know i don't have the ability to do it hmm. Hmm. right i need more you know support in terms of uh, capability building to be able to accomplish mm. and there may be some folks uh, whose aspiration is not in line with you know what we are uh, uh, aiming for that person correct right. not everyone uh, is you know aspiring for a fast track retire by 40 kind of a uh, approach every employee has a different there is a different ambition portion mm. and there is an ability portion and there's an opportunity portion so that's right? very nice yeah yeah and when these three come together is when you have an engaged employee uh, uh. right i may have someone who uh, whose aspirations are uh, you know to say at a 50 percent i right uh, ability is fine mm. and the opportunity is also commensurate with that uh, ability and if the employee is engaged that's perfectly fine and that's what we want we want employees to be engaged mm -hmm. and uh, there are there are uh, folks who uh, who are aspiring to be fast track and if you don't provide them the opportunity within the organization they look for an opportunity outside the organization yes so ability to <clears throat> ability of the managers leadership to assess Uh, you know the uh, aspiration quotient the ability quotient and provide them with appropriate opportunities that's what will create you know an engaged workforce yeah so i think uh, that's becoming a lot more important now in a new hybrid uh, environment that we are looking at uh, so so uh, you know taking it forward from there uh, ritu uh, you know uh, ram spoke about you know the engaged uh, employee right aspiration ability and various aspects Uh, and he also spoke about how OKRs are now getting uh, implemented by a lot of organizations to have better alignment. Right. So what changes do you foresee from an employee behavior uh, perspective in this new system of performance management? Because this is something new which they will be exposed to vis-a-vis uh, -vis, you know the earlier models were there. So, so what behavioral shift is required from an employee standpoint? yeah i think um ram beautifully uh, summed up the entire systemic change that we foresee in the performance management space um when we shift to the employee behavior that will need to um accompany the systemic change in my perspective i see um three key behaviors and there could be a lot more but the three key ones that really stands out for me is first is uh, the ownership of performance will really have to shift to the employees because if you look at it getting into a hybrid remote employees will be so dispersed while a manager owns the performance and the system i foresee employees taking a lot more ownership of their own performance and ensuring their managers are updated of that else i think it's asking too much of a manager managing everything else and a very very diverse dispersed workforce to be on top of this um consistently so a, a big shift i look at is uh employees being in the driver seat uh for driving their own performance 
The second one, um, and I see this happening a lot with the newer generation in the workplace is, uh, employees will be requesting for feedback more frequently um, and very, very often of their managers. How am I doing, right? It's no longer like Ram said, a mid-year or an annual. It, it has to be very, very frequent. And so our system has to enable that, but I see that being a key one where they'll be asking for feedback frequently. They want to know how they're doing, uh, strengths, opportunities, wins and misses far more frequently than what we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And the third one that I would say is the entire workforce um, composition is shifting, mm -hmm. right? So we no longer only have full-time employees. Yeah. If you see the traditional uh, performance management system was only for our full-time employees, but right now gig workers will go up. Uh, if I look at it in India, other places, it's already uh, taken up quite well. Interns, co-ops, um, so the performance management system will need to ensure that we are keeping it very flexible. So employees will seek flexibility of the performance management system so that I think um, Ram made a really good point of project base. It's not individual. I could be working in any capacity in the organization, but I will be evaluated for the work that I do, not the tenure or the kind of, um, I would say, contract that I have with the organization. So really to sum up to your question, Kartik, I think three things, employees will need to be in the driver's seat, Second is they'll be requesting for more frequent feedback. And the third is flexibility of the entire performance management process and the system. I see are the three key changes uh, coming up in the future. Yeah, and, and I think the ownership element and uh, you know the, the continuous feedback and all that will also increase as more of the Gen Z is also entering into the uh, workforce. Right? So, so they're, the way they operate will be totally different vis-a-vis -vis how the current systems are uh, in place. Uh, so, so interestingly, in our study, it showed that 77% employees who are working remotely uh, actually feel they would be differentiated when it comes to performance evaluations itself. Uh, so, so Arvind, what, what are some of the checks and balances that organizations can put in place to ensure that the assessment is happening in a very unbiased uh, fashion? Uh, in fact, uh, I was just, uh, in fact, thanks to Ram and in fact, uh, even uh, Ritu also for their fantastic thoughts, actually. I, in fact, I just want, wanted to uh, tell you something in terms of, I just told two important words here. Uh, one is basically performance coaching. Basically, as rightly said by Generation Z and Millennials, they have, uh, what do you say, immediate gratification. They, everything is gratification is very immediate. So what important thing is, and there is, I, I vaguely, I am not able to collect the article name, but then one of the article, which is supposed to be hot selling article in HBR is called actually something Time to by Marcus Beckham, wherein he says it's time to re-evaluate the performance management. Mm -hmm. In that, there is a word which I which really strikes me is basically the performance snapshots. So this goes in tune with what Ram and Ritu said. The so and you can just connect the dots now. The so called uh, the generation Z and millennials need immediate spontaneous feedback, and it more than in what do you say system. This is something which managers should definitely do, irrespective because. If your own employees, if you, your own team members are working for you, it becomes very, very important for you to give them feedback on routine basis. You cannot say at a fag of say one quarter or maybe six months, I'll give it. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving it, they're happy. And that feedback is through coaching also. You cannot say, I mean, because it's like these people are very, uh, I mean, very blunt in saying that, okay, you have literally, I mean, you have li literally irritated me. I'm planning to leave. So that, that's a crowd which we are dealing with. So keeping that in mind, the performance management should look at performance coaching. That word should move from performance management to performance coaching. Regular snapshots of feedback. It should be in chunks or nudges. You should be doing it because that's where you bring that trust factor also. Okay, I am working for you. You're giving me the feedback, which should be, you can take it as a constructive criticisms or whatever it is, but still what is there for me, if you can give them that, that would be the best thing. And finally, very important thing, uh, uh, Karthik, the missing point is expectation setting because the person joins, he's being given an old dated thing called your so-called job description or a so-called KPS, which hardly anyone looks into it. It becomes very mandatory for the manager to take some time out saying that these are a set of things which I'm going to evaluate you maybe on a weekly basis or maybe we can have a discussion which will tell us which is going to be constructive for both of us. Not that at the end you say that you missed on all these things. So then there's a mismatch of the expectation. So primarily in terms of performance snapshots, 
expectation setting and also regular feedbacks is something which I can, I see there's a tremendous need for a change because yeah. especially this two years have really brought those kind of things are, and people don't want to come online also in videos. True, true. <laughs> and I think by doing this, you're kind of building a lot more trust with the... Absolutely. In fact, so she is working for you. So basically, if you don't, if you are trying to hide yourself, probably he'll also say, okay, thank you very much, manager. I'll look out for something else. And yeah. I'm sure everyone will echo with that. <laughs> in fact, in one of our uh, earlier panel uh, discussions also, I think uh, one of the HR leaders, I think we should start calling it performance conversations. It's no longer performance appraisal or performance management and things like that, but it's more of performance conversations. And I think that, that stitches to, uh, you know, what you said about performance coaching uh, as well, right? So I think how that needs to be looked into itself uh, should be very different. Uh, so, uh, you know, while, while all these changes are happening, one thing that we have seen is uh, there's, there's a digital transformation which has also happened in the middle of all these. And HR, uh, you know, is now at the core of a lot of these uh, technologies, tools, which, uh, which are there out there to be used. Uh, so, so, Anand, I wanted to, uh, you know, check with you. How can technology tools equip managers to have these performance conversations in a better fashion or differently, because like they said, you know, now it is a lot more of performance snapshots, continuous feedback, etc. So how do you think technology can be an enabler for us? I think this is a very pertinent question as far as um, hybrid workforce or the hybrid work culture is concerned, right? First, we have to understand why do these people who are working remotely are going to feel that, you know, there is going to be some kind of bias against them as compared to someone who is working from the office. Right. So uh, the obvious answer is the physical co-location. Now comes the technology aspect. You have now identified the problem. The problem is lack of physical co-location. How do you solve that with technology? The obvious solution is obvious, the continuous feedback process, right? As everyone in this elite panel has been saying, the performance conversations cannot be at the end of the year at the middle of the year or something on those lines. It has to be continuous, right? Now, now comes the real technology and tools aspect. We have identified the problem. We have said continuous feedback process is the solution, but then how do you go about and implement it through technology and tools? Obviously there are N number of tools that are out there. You don't have to do anything extremely sophisticated. You can essentially have something as simple as a consolidated Google doc, where you are, you know, putting up all of the feedback that relates to an individual, right? The manager is going to have access to that feedback document throughout the period, as well as the employee. That's what, that's what really is going to solve for, right? Because you're not going to have those face-to-face -face in-person conversations and you're trying to replace them with these more frequent conversations along with the documentation. Mm -hmm. Another important element I think I've seen as far as these meetings are concerned is uh, typically nowadays, especially in the larger organizations, there are these virtual conversations, but everyone is switching off their cameras. I, I, I find it pretty disturbing because there are not going to be any meaningful conversations unless you're seeing the person in front of you, right? At the end of the day, the communication is not happening only through the voice and the words. At the end of the day, you have those um, body language aspects, which can only convey the entire communication if you can see the other person. So these are the couple of angles, I think, organizing your stuff digitally, organizing your feedback digitally and ensuring that you're having these continuous meaningful conversations through whatever possible way, as long as you're visible to someone else, even if you are not physically co-located. That's so true. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting. You said that it's, it's not that something we should look at as a technology problem to solve, but Right. what is the core issue that we have at hand? How do we address that? And then technology kind of becomes just an enabler uh, in this entire piece. Uh, so, so our, uh, you know, Ram spoke about OKRs, uh, uh, you know, when we started on. Uh, so according to our study, about 44% respondents believe that it's very important to align the performance management system with OKRs. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, how should organizations approach their journey of adopting OKRs for uh, performance management itself. 
and uh, you know this this question I, I would like to throw open to uh, all the panelists and uh, you know any anyone can uh, answer this because I'm sure each one of you have your own experience to share in this space. Uh, maybe with uh, uh, Ram or Arvind. Probably uh, I'll start and probably uh, I mean I'll I'll then I'll steal other ideas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I think. Uh, I, I again uh, in tune with what actually uh, in fact Anand was saying the most important thing is basically when you have the expectation setting in place what you're doing is basically see any kind of performance management finally it gets cascaded down or whatever way you see it up and down kind of this one the most important thing is missing is and this is what if you look at the generation z and uh, millennials probably those two people they're looking for an important ingredient in the whole philosophy called the purpose because unless and until you tell me what is there for me, what exactly I should do, the so-called expectation setting people don't spend a lot of time. They just want to give some points here, ensure the rewards are fine, and then they want to see everyone keeping smiling face. That's the wrong thing, actually. That, 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 that kind of movement is over. Now, in fact, you're looking at the students, even from the so-called tier one colleges or tier two, they really want to understand, am I doing something called CI, contribution and impact? So the whole philosophy of OKRs would be purposeful or meaningful if you have the right purpose set in, in terms of CI, contribution and impact. Okay, when you do this, this is the impact you're going to do for yourself and for the organization. Let's have those kind of honest conversations because that is very important. Second is the value which you're going to give. Again, it comes from the word called impact, IMC, impact. So the value, what I'm going to contribute, at least let them see it. Most of the things, you start hiding it as if it's a big secret for the organization. Let them see that, okay, they are also contributing. They, they are the gone are those days when you used to, you use the words called work, job, assignments, task, and all this. I have assigned some task to you in Slack. All right, stop it. No, no, you are not supposed to say that. You are saying, how do you see you can contribute to the whole thing? If you're looking at a Google kind of company, they use a word called 10x. That's why you see all projects are 10x kind of thing. What is the impact you're going to do it? Next is the culture also. We say so much of culture. At least if the management buy-in is not there, the culture itself is not accepting this. They say, okay, we want OKRs and all, but then finally this kind of disclosures are not there. Or probably mm -hmm. there is a lot, a lot of, or do you say, a lot of barriers in terms of communication probably there also. Uh, probably this will not, uh, this one. And finally the focus, high-end focus. OKRs is objectives, bigger purpose, and the key results which are in tune with that. And in terms of mark and keep this very short, three months kind of thing. In mm -hmm. fact, there was a recent article from McKinsey called three into three into three, which I'm just trying to connect with this basically three goals and you should actually have three learnings from it and basically three people who are supporting it. So probably I'm just trying to bring that context, still, uh, context here. And finally, ensure performance review and OKRs are not the same because you need to tell them both are different things because they should not say after doing the OKRs, it's going to be like, Chalo, my uh, everything is done. No. And try to ensure communication is very, very robust on the ground. Mm. Over communicate, it's still okay. But then, if you don't communicate, they'll say something is like a secret. And finally, uh, the whole communication goes for a grapevine, and the whole idea of the OKRs goes for a loss. So, uh, uh, Anand, uh, you know, we've kind of worked with a lot of clients who use OKRs as well, uh, right? Different uh, maturity levels of the organization, different sizes, different industries. So, what have been some of your learnings, uh, you know, getting from the client projects on, you know, companies, how do they approach this? Absolutely. I think as far as this group is concerned, right, uh, my interpretation so far is uh, majority on this panel are probably separating performance management from OKRs. Yeah. Now, obviously, there is no right or wrong. There is no black and white solution to this. But from our experience, typically 50% organizations that we work with that are using appraise for OKRs as well as performance management, they say we want both of these things, uh, th these things completely separate of each other. And there is rest of the half that says we think there should be an element of connectivity between the two. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I said, there is not going to be a black and white solution and you will be able to find something that's ready-made for your organization. You have to take into account the cultural aspects, the um, past performance management systems as well. If you're trying to sort of shake up the entire performance management philosophy in a fortnight, that's definitely not going to happen. There has to be a gradual shift from what was before and what you're trying to achieve, right? Now, based on that, as far as um, our experience, again, goes with the technology and tools, whether you follow this philosophy or that philosophy, whether you agree both are connected or whether you disagree that they are connected, it has to be conveyed to the entire organization in a crystal clear manner. That's where technology and tools come into the picture, right? Again, 
we we always fall back to the communication aspect of it if it is not communicated then people are going to get confused because at the end of the day when you are saying okay as people are just going to say this looks like a goal yeah. right and when anyone hears it's a goal they are essentially thinking okay this is going to have some kind of an impact on my promotion on my pay package or something on those lines so even if you are disconnecting these or connecting these two there has to be a clear communication which can only happen through proper technology and in fact when there is a there is supposed to be a connection again from from our experience we have seen that connection to be extremely complex which cannot be managed outside of digital world if you try and do that inside of even spreadsheets it becomes extremely difficult so just to give you a little a little bit of more context we have seen some organizations include okrs in the performance management processes to a specific extent they say 20% of your okrs are going to have some kind of impact on the final performance evaluation that is going to happen right so there is a lot of complexity surrounding this there is no one size shoe that fits everyone that is where i think the communication aspect will be covered and taken over by technology tools so i think because it's an evolving uh, piece so, so obviously uh, there will be a lot of learning that people will get on the way uh, while adopting this uh, absolutely so so we covered kartik uh, sorry with your permission i just wanted to add yes, three yes, things yes. which is very important which i just again was i was just thinking on the lines of one and most important thing is basically communication in terms of three aspects one is basically do a lot of fgds because when you're doing any kind of change management if you're not having fgds the buy in will not be there from the employees mm. second is basically uh, also ensure you take surveys also on routine basis actually most of the times fgds is done after that you don't communicate with them that is most important thing they they also want to understand what exactly is this and also have lot of road shows also done maybe in terms of any kind of posters or nudges or anything at least they understand this is what it is this separates at least there would be some lagards which you cannot do anything but then at least 98 percentage if they are okay with you probably they that itself will spread out a good communication at least so what hr or the leadership has done the communication effectively so i think doing that communication to uh, you know bring clarity is the key absolutely Arito, would you like to add anything to this yeah um as i was hearing i think two key things that um kind of stood out for me one is this is perhaps the one area of hr that we have had the most experiments over the last several years and while we are doing that i think um arvin mentioned that that it has to the system has to be contextual to the organization the maturity level of the organization the future strategy and the culture that it has so another uh, performance management system might look good but is it what will make sense for me so i think that is key and the second one with all the uh, you know future of work everything that um, we are seeing and uh, we have this in my organization is transparency right so you use a system or however you do is bringing transparency whether it's okr goals whatever is the nomenclature uh we are not working in silos i think ram said we have project based um kras which means i need to see what everyone on that project or team is working on if i take the example of my organization from ceo to every leader and every person who works we can see goals right we call them goals and it's it's public right so i feel transparency is a thing of uh, present and it will stay in the future so just wanted to add my two cents on on this sure sure so I, that's a, that's a very valid point because uh, you know across the board in this conversation we are seeing that unless it's transparent then there is no belief in the system and if there's no belief in the system obviously the system will not work and it, uh, you know deliver the impact that we are uh, expecting it to do just to uh, just to yeah. add on there um if you look at how a, a full time traditional employee uh, was reviewed mm. just by the manager yeah uh, it doesn't matter you know who, the different stakeholders whom you are working with uh, the manager has 100% say in your you know review rating performance etc vis a vis a gig worker like say an uber driver uh, where his performance evaluation is being done on every trip right 
and um, he is working with multiple customers during the day multiple customers over the month uh, and his rating is you know is evolving mm. and is uh, fairly objective barring some outliers etc mm. so i think performance uh, evaluation or performance management is moving uh, from the uh, extreme of manager having 100% say to you know every stakeholder whom you interact with has a say in in the way you are perceived mm. and you know is measuring your contribution impact etc so it's a uh, in in a crude way it's a crowd crowdsourced uh, performance management sure. uh, every stakeholder whom you are engaging with is telling you how well you have contributed or not contributed to the cause i, I am not a you know believer that uh, digital sort of dehumanizes uh, the approach mm. uh, i i believe uh, digital uh, sort of enables what a uh, what an ideal enables an ideal scenario mm-hmm. uh, take it take it in terms of a feedback mechanism mm. uh, you know there is an uh, there is a system that enables you know different stakeholders to give you feedback uh, you know defines a certain periodicity and you know institutionalizes the uh, institutionalizes the whole ecosystem of you know ensuring that you get feedback right so it's an enabler um so uh, whenever discussions come up about you know high tech high touch uh, or you know because there is high tech the touch is getting uh, lower Mm. that's some that's something that i don't resonate strongly with um but uh, i i believe in you know high level of personalization mm. so uh, when you look at when you look at coaching uh, and the one to one one to one coaching primarily does that yeah. uh, it does a high level of personalization uh, in terms of how uh, it helps each individual embrace um, and adapt the path that is laid out so even uh, if i um, like you say um, leaders of different kind hmm. right leaders come from different you know gender ethnicity <clears throat> background they would have come from organizations of uh, a different uh, uh, domain and a different level of maturity and when uh, in in your view you might have 10 cxos yeah it looks fairly you know a manageable a uniform group but there is a whole lot of diversity in that group right one cxo might come from uh, you know a system that is very hierarchical traditional another cxo would have landed from a very you know high tech uh, you know highly process driven uh, mm-hmm. kind of an organization and when you are trying to build the culture of an organization each one of them have different uh models that have worked for them in the past mm. right and you are trying to build a unified culture which works for this particular organization mm. uh so individual coaching and at the same time uh, team coaching team coaching is something that is evolving uh, uh, very significantly individual coaching is is will say okay uh, there is someone who is at a cxo minus 1 you want him to become cxo it's it's more a personal development kind of a journey mm. whereas if you are doing a um, uh, team coaching mm. uh, i am having a conversation with these 10 cxos and then saying okay let's uh, let's have our own unique definition of culture yeah. what do we believe as the right people management practices mm. Mm. if someone does not switch on video in a you know uh, in a in a call what do you make out of it Mm. you know what are the biases that each one of us have built uh, mm. uh, someone may think he is not serious that's why he has not switched on video mm. he is worn a casual uh, shirt so he is not serious mm. there are different uh, biases that we have built you know for every scenario like this Correct. so team coaching is more about uh, decoding those biases and uh, arriving at a common uh, culture code and driving the organization Uh, and those ethos sort of uh, seep into every uh, people practice that you do whether it is performance management or whether it is uh, you know policy for uh, flexi working all of in each of these 
uh, the foundation is my thought process, my biases that I have about how people react. So I see team coaching playing a greater role in terms of uh, contributing to a unified approach okay. at an organization level. Okay. Ritu, any thoughts? I think um, first I would say managers are the most key in all of these. With the dispersed workforce, uh, the organization's best bet of reaching out to all employees are its frontline managers. And uh, in coaching them, I think uh, there are two things that I would say we really need to um, look at what they should do more of. And the first one is uh, building psychological safety. And I think you sh- we have a new um, uh, complexity in our diversity quotient, which is hybrid remote. These were not terms before. So that's a new composition, right? So how can we coach managers to create a very, very safe space and environment where they are ensuring the person on the Zoom, in the room, wherever they are, they're all heard equally. They're all getting visibility equally. Uh, they are all feeling safe to speak up, right? So I would say that's the first one. And if you get that right, I think we've all spoken about building trust, everything else falls in place. And the second one, I think we've spoken a lot of coaching, I would say is um, managers will have to lead more and more with empathy and curiosity. And if you ask me empathy, especially uh, Zoom, um, you don't have a video on, you don't know what's going on with the person, right? So un- understanding what am I not seeing as a manager, being curious and really, really leading with empathy will be so key as we are going to lead this multi-generational, diverse, hybrid, whatever you want to add to that workforce. And I think curiosity is the first thing of coaching, right? Right to take a genuine interest in the other person, what's going on with their life, their career, their performance, and leading with question. So listen more, leading with question, lead with curiosity. I think these are simple skills, but I think they've become more important than ever for managers. So I would say these are two things um, that we could uh, look at for equipping our managers. Arvind, any any additional points you would... I, I, I actually got six points from both of them. So if I were to conclude or if I were to say it was all, it, it, it's a mix You're of making my life easier. <laughs> it, it, it is a mix of six C's actually. Very, very important six C's, which I took a note of. One is basically in terms of compa- being compassionate because I think last two years, most important thing is empathy, kindness, compassion. All those kind of things are something which if you happen to Google it, that is coming up. And basically the mindfulness, all those things. And when you as a coach, you're doing it, you should be really compassionate. As Ritu rightly said, you don't know the other person is fighting his or her battle on the other side. So if you don't demonstrate compassionate, you should not be doing coaching. That's the first thing. And second is basically curiosity in terms of listening, because that's something as a manager, it's not that you have saying that you, my boss has given me five goals. So you better do that. So there also you lose the essence of the so-called coaching conciseness you should be because no one wants to be there in this virtual world be very clear and concise and uh, in fact clarity and conciseness is another thing and then connectivity regular connects is very very important keeping the current virtual world otherwise we used to have a lot of water cooler kind of conversations or maybe chai discussions right now it is not there the connecting connectivity is something very important if you're doing coaching do it with a lot of purpose and intention so that the other person also feels feels that this is not one time activity one checklist kind of thing he's, he or she is doing and last but not the least consistency in doing it also connectivity is one thing with the consistency keeping in that so these are six points which i could gather and then share so 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 i think uh, you know a lot of things that that emerged out of this uh, panel discussion today so if i were to summarize some of the key aspects so as, as takeaway so i think um, definitely performance management as we know will no longer be what it is uh, it is no longer the annual the semi annual uh, discussions uh, it's going to be more real time more continuous feedback that we are looking at uh, there needs to be a lot more transparency with with respect to what is it that you are expected and you know measuring it more with respect to the impact that you are generating and not the amount of time that you have spent or uh, you know your qualification your years of experience etc so i think that's another uh, huge shift that's going to happen uh, okrs again a lot of experimentation happening nothing right wrong depending on the maturity level of the organization their culture uh, you know what's the leadership approach that they want to take uh, you know it it can work and uh, you know some of them may link it to performance some of them may keep it uh, open uh, you know both both separately uh, and i think having that empathy uh, 
to to man for, from a manager standpoint uh, to have those conversations to have the curiosity and i think more importantly actively listen so you know one of the coaching skills is also about active listening so i think for managers that's also another very key uh, skill set to build on and i think some some very interesting ideas which which also you know ram brought up was you know uh, crowd crowdsourcing of appraisal ratings right so that was also very interesting and having an internal marketplace of talent uh, for for different by upskilling and reskilling uh, existing workforce so i think uh, and and finally while all this is happening uh, technology will be at the core of all this and it will continue to be an enabler as we move forward uh, so thank you once again to all our panelists for these wonderful insights that you have shared i i love the conversation i learned a lot as well so i am going to go back and make my notes uh, so that we start applying some of these things that ami boys have said uh, so thank you once again thank you all thank, thank you everyone thank you everyone good day take care good day bye bye